All right. Well, welcome everyone here again. Thank you for joining us um, here at Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. Uh, my name is Pastor Ernie Jung here. Um, and as we uh, continue on our study in the book of Ephesians, uh, today we will, uh, we will discuss uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 uh, to 21. A lot of good stuff here. Again, in case you have missed our previous studies, please go to our YouTube page at Faith Lutheran Church Moore Park, and there you will find everything archived from Bible studies in Ephesians to sermons to devotions, uh, literally in every which way, uh, something that you will benefit from as it is in the Word of God. So uh, may this all go well with you this day as we continue on together. Uh, please have your Bible out. Uh, please um, continue uh, to follow along on our, on our, our whiteboard here. And uh, let us continue with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you uh, for this time as we study your word. May this word bring us great joy and peace as it sustains and strengthens us by the power of the Holy Spirit. According to the riches of your grace, O oh Lord, lead us in the profound depth that you have given to us in your Son, his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Bless us in the fullness of Christ. We pray all this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. So today, as we continue here, uh, to, to rehash on what we spoke of last week, uh, we concluded last week with those words in verse 13 of chapter 3. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory, all right? So now uh, with, that, uh, with that moment uh, of time uh, from, I think from chapter three, uh, St. Paul is going back to prayer. Now, from 14 to 21, he is praying uh, for the Ephesians, for the, uh, for the Gentiles, um, that in the midst of his house arrest, that they may continue to be strengthened uh, by the word of God, namely Christ Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And that he's praying for their spiritual strength. All right. So, in light of that, he begins verse 14. Let us read together. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. All right. So, for this reason, and I'm gonna use a lot of colors here, see if it all, see if we have a good color that works. Um, I think the purple one's good. Oh, yeah, well, that'll work. All right. Uh, for this reason, right? For this reason. Now, this goes back to Ephesians 2, 11 to 22, all right? That because of Ephesians 2, and that is uh, namely uh, St. Paul uh, uh, describing the gospel uh, in a nutshell, uh, by grace you are saved through faith, right? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, um, and following 11 to 22. Uh, but we see right here that, that the, uh, because of the gospel and what that brings, Jesus, right? Again, from him, all blessings flow. And that is the cross, the empty tomb, the sacraments, all by the words of Christ. For this reason, because of the grace of God, because of what God has done, what does he do? He bows. An act of submission, humility, Uh, uh, as we live under the name of God. Again, all this is under, remember, who is receiving it, and that is man, as we live under the gift of our Lord, as he gives to us this very free gift of the gospel. <coughs> so, right here we see, for this reason, because of the gospel, I bow my knees before the Father. I mean, you know, St. Paul prays. He prays for the... Now, 
the privilege that we have in prayer is that because Jesus is our what? Advocate, intercessor. We talked about Ascension Day probably a while back last week. And because he intercedes for us, we, are, uh, we have the confidence and boldness that we can pray to our Father as we are his true children. Our Father, explanation, catechism, check it out. But um, because of that, he bows, right? Humility, submission under his care, right? Not above, not, not to the left, not to the right, but under uh, the good shepherd's care as he lays his life down for the sheep. All right, so for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. Our posture is very important. It really is. And I think this is a theme that we see in verse, uh, verse 14 about uh, our posture. You know, again, when we, when we bow to the, uh, when we hear the triune name uh, during service, we bow. Um, and again, uh, why we do that is not to be showy, right? It's not because we're trying to do some uh, self-righteous, pious thing, but we're giving honor to, the, uh, to, to God who is present with us, right, in the divine service. Uh, but also, you know, when we do, let's say, the sign of the cross, um, and we have the posture, as I always say, you know, um, there's something about posture in a sense of being at church in the presence of God and his word. And there in that posture, uh, it is that sign of, of not only the, the cross, but also uh, the honor and the reverence that indeed we live humbly, knowing that he brought us in his name. Um, that we give him all glory because the glory is Christ given to us. And, and there, we, there we receive it um, with this posture, right? I think, uh, you know, I think for kids, uh, as parents, if you are parents out there, uh, the way we could teach our children well is to bring them to church, right? Bring them to church, not simply as a mechanical thing, but as a, as a way to which they understand what is happening there as the word of God is given, as they are receiving these very gifts under his name in that posture. So bring them to church time and time again. Remember, your family, your household is your greatest evangelism field. And as God says in his vocation, Ephesians 6, 4, fathers do not exasperate your children, but instruct them in the word of God. This is a reminder to us um, uh, how we can teach our children uh, the posture of faith. Um, anyways, tip it for you there. But here we see, uh, for this reason, because of the gospel, because of the receiving of the gifts, he is submitting and he is mightily humble or showing humility as he is bowing to the Lord in prayer. Boldness and confidence is God is our Father and we are his true children. All right, verse 15. Now, in this prayer, in this address, there is a description of who our Lord is in verse 15. Why don't we read that together? From whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, right? <clears throat> when we talk about name. What should immediately come up in your mind, right? Again, uh, this is a baptismal reminder that you were grafted into the name of Christ and the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all by the holy water and word of holy baptism. As God has chosen you by this very name, fear not. I have called you by name and you are mine. I have redeemed you. Sorry, I got that all out of order. And it is by that name to which we are, uh, 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 to, <laughs> by that name to which we are connected to God. And every family, that everything, when we talk about Apostles' Creed, Article 1. Right? That God has created all things, that God uh, uh, continues to sustain all things, and that everything, the omniscience, the omnipresence, the omnipotence of God is, is shown here. This is who he is praying to. The Lord's will be done, and it is done through Christ, and there he is praying, and, and he is giving all credit, St. Paul is, to God as every family on heaven and on earth is named, right? And again, when we talk about family, from the word 
patria, or from the word pater, which means father, everything is pater, patria, derived from the father to the family. Everything flows from the father. Right? Everything is credited and, 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 and given and outpoured by the abundant grace of our Lord because God is love, because he is merciful, gracious, abounding in slow, um, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. It is from the Father where everything is derived, including the family, and for this reason, derived from the Father. Right? And thus, he prays to the Father in submission and humility because everything is derived from him. And we give all glory and thanks to God as we thank, pray, serve, and obey him um, in the one true faith. And, and, and this is what is happening here. He is addressing God and he's describing God. And now in verse 16, what is happening? He says all together, why don't we read that? That according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. All right, so this is who our Lord is. Uh, he is the all-powerful God. And now St. Paul is saying, according to the riches of his grace. This is according to means based on and rooted in and the foundation, right? All this language of according. I love that word according because it means this is the baseline. This is uh, the place to which everything flows. Just like father to family, for this reason, everything flows, as we see right here, outside of ourselves to us by the grace of God, word and sacrament. Sacrament, of course, is gospel as well. According to the riches of his glory, glory full of grace and truth, and of course, that is Jesus. <clears throat> uh... What does it say? Uh, that he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. They needed strength. Right? They needed strength. This is what St. Paul is praying for them. He is under arrest and he is praying that they may be strong. Now, the, the point is, how are they strong? How do we have spiritual strength? It says right there. Uh, uh, that uh, he may grant you to be strengthened with power. <clears throat> How are uh, we given that strength? Sorry, my throat. <clears> Through <throat> the Holy Spirit. Through the Spirit. How are you strengthened through the Spirit? Does the Spirit give you spinach like Popeye? Does the Spirit give you a feeling? Uh, if, uh, you know, just summoning up that strength by your own human will, you know, just, okay, I have strength. Okay, I have strength. Or, or is it just uh, based on your own human self-righteousness that you have this strength? Now, again, what is it about the Holy Spirit? You know, our faith is given to us, Apostles' Creed, Article 3. And that's why I tell you guys that repeating the catechism, learning the catechism um, is so important because it really does open the floodgates to a deeper understanding of all this, right? Of course, the catechism is based and is based on the scriptures and the Holy Word of God. And it's through the catechism, as we look at these topics like the Holy Spirit, Article 3, uh, of the Apostles' Creed, we know that there the Holy Spirit does what? He calls us by the gospel, not by human reason or strength, but the Holy Spirit calls us by the gospel. He calls us by the word. He enlightens, gathers, and sanctifies, and keeps us in the true faith. How? How does the Holy Spirit through give us strength? And that is by the word. You know, Studying the Word of God isn't just mere information processing. You know, coming to church and, and receiving uh, the gifts, uh, this is uh, the Word of God. The Holy Spirit is working there, strengthening you all by His Word. That Word that points to what? What is the work of the Holy Spirit? To, to also, number one, to convict, 
but also to comfort, to show you your sin by the preaching of the law, but also comforting you by the righteousness of Christ in the preaching of the gospel. That by that very word, at the end of the day, you're pointing to the bullseye Jesus Christ. As a pastor, what is my job? It's to prepare people with a bullet bullseye of salvation. That at the end of the day, their assurance is in Christ alone. To give them that very word of the gospel time and time again. So at the end of the day, when they ask the question, they'll very well know where they are to go all by what Jesus has done for them. Right? And this is how we are strengthened. By the word of Christ. By the word that points us to the comfort of Christ and his cross and the empty tomb, the gospel, the sacraments. This is what strengthened us. And this is how the Holy Spirit works. You know, that's why coming to church, if we get it wrong and we think that we come to church just to kind of check off the box, um, we're, we're getting it all wrong. But rather, what is the Lord going to give me today? How is the Holy Spirit going to strengthen me? Because trust me, um, there are moments in life, many moments in life where we, where, where we need to hear the word for what it says and what it gives. Because there we are refreshed and renewed and sanctified and strengthened as this strengthening is pointed to Christ and his word, right? And um, this is what St. Paul is praying. Remember, strengthen is a passive. That means uh, that is not your own doing. You're not taking, uh, you're not going to the gym and getting the muscles and getting strong and you're not actively doing this yourself, but it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that strengthens you um, um, in, in this very word. That's why hearing the word is such great blessing, right? Bringing your kids to church is such great blessing because we know this is how the word works. This is how the Holy Spirit works through that very word that points us to the law, that, that comforts us in the gospel, that gives us the comfort knowing that that bullseye is Jesus. And at the end of the day, we know where we fix our eyes because it's only Christ. And this is very important to understand because if we get this wrong and we think that we're summoning up the strength, then we will take it wrong and, and believe that we're on this, again, this ladder of faith, trying to strengthen ourselves, trying to uh, measure up to God, trying to be strong enough in front of God. No, we know that's not the case. rather God coming down to us, strengthening us by his blood, the proclamation of the gospel, the sacraments, uh, the forgiveness of your sins through, his, uh, through the Lord's table um, as he serves you his true body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the strengthening. And we all need to be strengthened because when we look in the mirror, we, 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 we know what's before us and that is our sin. All right. Yes. Continuing, verse 17, oh boy, this is getting messy, sorry. Verse 17, Christ, right? It says right there, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Christ dwells in your hearts. How are you rooted and grounded? By the word. Now, again, you know, it's very easy, uh, uh, I think when we talk about being rooted and grounded, we, we think of uh, the foundational aspect of, uh, of to which we stand. Uh, we can also think of the parable of the sower and how easy it is, whether it be the, the, the rocky ground or the thorns uh, as a scorching, uh, uh, as the cares and riches of this life wrap us and choke us, uh, the good soil. But... It's in this very word that we are rooted and grounded in Christ. That is your root and ground. That's what you need to hear time and time again, right? Because when I hear someone say, do we have to hear about the gospel again? My answer is yes, <laughs> right? It is. Not just any gospel, but the gospel that is for you, right? And this is what the rooted and groundedness is all about that Christ may dwell in our hearts by the words of Christ, his gospel, and there 
uh, they would continue in the hope that was within them, and that is uh, the body and blood of Jesus, all right? So rooted and grounded. How are we rooted and grounded? By the word of God. You know, have you ever gone uh, 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 droughted in God's word or have you ever sp spin the wheels in the faith where you're just kind of going through the motions and, you know, checking out the box, okay, I did the Sunday thing and then I move on and then I go on and I live out my life the way I do and then I go to Sunday, okay, I checked out the Christian box and, and I did my attendance and now I get to go on. You know, or, or you just stop coming to church. Have you ever been in that? I think we all have in, in a certain way, shape or form, whether it's being there but not being there or just not being there at all. Um, uh, what happens? Uh, our, roots and, our roots start to kind of change. The ground seems to get a little more mushy. Ooh. <laughs> right? It just, everything starts to wane and, and go another way. You know, how are we strengthened? By the word of God. The deception is you are strong enough in yourself. That's what the devil says. And he says that because he says, I don't want you to listen to God's word. Right? That's his goal. Um, and uh, this is a constant tension. Like, can you be strong without the word of God? Can you be strengthened without the word of God? Are you okay without the word of God? And is it okay to live on these general spiritual platitudes with God? We call it moralistic therapeutic deism. Look it up. And man, it's a very common thing this day and age uh, with a lot of people's view on who God is, moralistic, therapeutic, deism. Google it and uh, let me know what you think. Anyways, okay, continuing on here. Verse 18 and 19. May have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, as I said earlier, if someone tells me I already know the gospel, do we? Do we know the depth of God's mercy and grace? Every single day, we daily sin much, but yet our Lord forgives us of all of our sin. How, how gracious is our Lord, right? This is so radical compared to what our world says about you gotta do something to get something, right? Here we see that in, in our call of this of our Lord and, and the strength that he gives to us by his very word, the breadth, the length, the height, the depth, and the fullness that surpasses all things. I mean, this is something that we can chew on until the end of time. Um, knowing that being rooted and grounded in the love of Christ <clears throat> is from the gifts that are above. And, and when we talk about the death of God's love, his crucifixion, his resurrection, uh, life eternal, uh, forgiveness of sins and salvation. That you are full by that very word. This is what St. Paul's praying. That they may be filled with all the fullness of God. I, I think this is the tension too. Are you full? Are you, are you full by the things of the world or, or are you full by the strengthening through God's word in Christ Jesus? Where do you find your fullness? I already know that. I, I know the gospel. Okay, Jesus, okay, he died and rose and he forgives me of my sin. But think about it. I mean, the fullness of this gospel story, the salvation story, I mean, the word made flesh, the incarnation, right? Actively, passively obedient, you know, um, his whole life all the way uh, to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins and not only his whole life, but actually doing it as he went to the cross, come, let us go. Uh, the, the hour is at hand and he goes to the cross and dies and bleeds and suffers and being sacrificed, whipped and scourged and scoffed and spat upon, uh, arrayed with thorns he had over his head. And, and there he was even forsaken by the father in, in the darkest hour. See, all this, the fullness of Christ, all this for each and every one of us, including you. And the radical nature of the resurrection is profound in itself. 
And what it gives from that empty tube is even more profound in itself, knowing that right now we have eternal life, forgiveness, and salvation all by what God has given to us. And this is the fullness that he is talking about, that he is praying for their fullness, that this may be filled in them, right? So full we are that our cup overflows without even our doing, because this is what the bountiful life of Christ gives to us, and that is what he is praying for them, because he very well knows that as he is under house arrest, this can be a very discouraging time for them. And you may face a lot of discouraging times in your life too. I totally get it. I do, myself. But yet we go back to this word, the fullness that he gives. This is fullness. The, 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 the gospel and the sacraments, this is of the profound fullness that nothing of this world can give. And there we are, as St. Paul prays. That Christ may be full in us by the strength and by the power of the Holy Spirit who points us in our sin to the cross, the forgiveness of sins. The life of faith right there, as St. Paul prays for them and how we can apply this to ourselves as well. All right, concluding. Uh, verse 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Again, this conclusion goes back to what? Verse 15. Verse 14. Above all that we ask or think. For this reason, above all that we ask or think, every family is named above all that we ask or think. And this is what he is reminding uh, the Gentiles that yes, he is above us. We live under his name. We are uh, to submit in faith, humility, knowing that all things flow from our gracious God and his abundant love to us, that this gospel, all that he provides daily in provision and all that we have, what a fullness this is. More than we ask, more than we know. This is who our God is. Okay, and then he goes to the docs. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever, amen, amen, right? for all generations. There's a lot of stuff here uh, that St. That Paul prays for. As we conclude, some themes for this reason, the gospel, that's a theme, right? And I want you to think about this stuff uh, as you study it. Name, that's another theme. What name would you, which, to which name were you grafted in and how was this grafting done? Was it by your work or only by the grace of God, right? What is humility? What is submission? What does that look like? Is that legalistic? Is that a have to? Or is it this life of faith in which you were brought into? What are you living according to? And according to these riches, where do you find your strength? How are you to dwell in our hearts Christ Jesus? Again, by the word. And what is that word in Christ Jesus? How do we uh, chew on that, right? I mean, you know, no pun intended, but when we talk about the supper of our Lord, the, the, the breadth and length, the height and depth, the means of our Lord's grace, how it is distributed to us or, or, or uh, uh, administered to us, that by the fullness that he gives, another nugget, we praise the Lord for all that he has done. There's a lot of stuff here today. I look at it and I'm confused already. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully it went well with you, you know? Hopefully you, you got it. But if you didn't, replay it. If you didn't again, replay it again. Over and over again, and there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of themes. I like, you know, when I do Bible studies, I try to find the nuggets that we can apply, themes that really open the door to a uh, a much uh, uh, thicker meaning, a deeper meaning. And, and here we see all these different themes throughout uh, verses uh, 14 to 21 of Ephesians chapter three. Hopefully that, I, I, did, I did enough here. I think so. Sounds good. All right, why don't we, um, why don't we close uh, with a word of prayer? 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you uh, for the gift of salvation. Bless us in the fullness that you give, knowing that what you have done for us, Lord, we thank you according to the riches of your glory. Bless us in Christ Jesus. Sanctify us in your truth and through all things. Grant us the joyful fullness that you have given to us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, thank you for joining me. And uh, may this word go well with you. And may you, uh, may you continue to be strengthened by the work of God's word and the Holy Spirit. All right. Until next time, check within us next week. And we'll see you then. Have a wonderful day. Love you all. Praying for you all. Until next time. Adios. And goodbye.